So our first step is going to be to assign each student a number from 0, 1 to 36. Now it's important you don't start at 1. You have to start at 0, 1 because each number we assign to the students has to be two digits long to make each number equally likely to be selected from our random number list. For step 2, we'll check the digits two at a time in a random number table for values between 0, 1 and 36. We need to ignore repeats and continue the process until we have five unique values. For step three, we're going to match the digits to the corresponding student numbers to form our simple random sample. So now we're going to use our method. First, we need to assign all the students a number. All right, now we're ready to look through our table. And what we're going to do is we're going to look two digits at a time for numbers that are between 0, 1, and 36. So let's start with these first two numbers. That's 31. So that's our first name we're going to select. The next two digits are 98 and they exceed our interval of interest. So we'll cross out 98. Then we have 94, which is the 9 here and the 4 there. That also exceeds our interval. Next we have 33. We'll take that. Then here's 69 too high. 57, also too high. Here's a 63, also too high. 51, again too high. 82, again too high. 53, too high. 78, too high. All right, here's 27. We'll take that. And here's 23. That's within 0, 1, and 36, so we'll take it. Next, we have a 97. We'll cross that out. And now we have 33. Now, we should take this, but the problem is we already got a 33 here. So this is not a unique number. We're going to cross that out. But the next number is 35, so we'll take that. So we're going to use the numbers 31, 33, 27, 23, and 35. Let's look at what names those correspond to. Emma is 35. Anthony is 33. Zachary's 31, Abigail's 27, and Tyler is 23. So those are the students in our sample. Before we move on to part C, let me show you a way to do this on the calculator instead of using the table of random digits. Press the math button and go over to PRB, probability. Now if you have a newer calculator, it will have this option rand int no repeat. So I'm going to say start at 1 and go up to 36 and select 5 numbers. And the neat thing about this is it won't pick any numbers that repeat. So when I press paste and then enter, here's my numbers. It looks like uh, number 34, James, Anthony, number 33, Alexis, number 6, number 19, Andrew, and 15, Elizabeth. That's our sample. And if you press enter again, it will give you a new sample. So you can draw as many as you want. If you don't have that function on your calculator, don't worry, you can still use this. Press math and go to PRB, click random integer, and for lower we're going to do 1 again, upper 36, but for n we're going to put a number greater than 5. That way if we get any repeats we can ignore them and move on to the next number. So I'll put like 15. And all I'm going to do is use the first 5 unique numbers. So let's see, 36, 11, 10, 5, and 2. Well, the first five are unique, so I don't have to worry about it. But if I scroll through this, I think, yeah, we got two twos right there. So this list does generate repeat numbers, so watch out for those. The wording of this question will likely lead to response bias. Students will likely be influenced by the strong words like intelligent, talented, hardworking, and they're going to feel pressured to answer the test or not too hard, so they can feel like they're part of that group. This would lead to an underestimate of the true proportion of students who feel the test are too hard. If you like this video and want to learn more about collecting data through sampling and experiments, check out this playlist. We cover sampling methods, bias, simple random samples, experiments, and more.